Exo just did a fishing video, and he did a great job on it, but I'm a bit sad, cause I kinda wanted to do a fishing video. There are a couple of things he missed however, so that means I get to cover whatever he missed. So far, every fishing video has missed secrets and tactics, and I'm going to cover those for you here. If you want a more cohesive guide, you can check Exo's video in the description. But without further ado, let's get into the secrets. One thing I wanted to look at is this chart here. This is the lure chart. This is probably the most important thing to fishing. It looks intense and very overbearing, but what you really need to know is just the numbers that are underneath each fish. This is the multiplier of how fish become interested in the hook. At 1, the fish gets attracted equivalent to the charm of the lure. If we use the heavy lure as an example with a base charm of 50, you can see how every fish becomes 50% interested. That's because the heavy lure has a 1 times multiplier for every fish. Compare that to the base hook, which has a 10% charm, but only attracts all fish by 25%, you can see that we only get a 0 0.02 interest for every fish with just a bare hook, or just a 2% chance of hooking a fish. That means if everything is done correctly, the chance of a fish biting on a spinner bait on its first nibble is 80%. If the fish does not bite on the first chance, every nibble afterwards adds an additional 20% of the charm to the hook. That means that if everything is done correctly on a spinner bait, the chances for a fish biting a hook go from 80% to 96%, adding 16% each time, which is 80% times 20%. This also means, however, that if a fish gets interested while you are at your max charm, you don't need to keep up that charm for the fishes to stay interested. They will be multiplied by the charm that exists. It's important, however, to get your hook as close to the player as possible. Because if you do, you can completely ignore the whole fishing minigame. Normally when a fish bites, you have to fight it or tire it out for it to get close to the player. This adds a little bit of extra time while you're fishing. But if you catch a fish that's close, you can instantly reel in that fish. You can see here with the reel close, the fish bites onto the hook and it says I can catch it because I'm close enough to catch it. So I don't even need to play the mini game to catch any fish. The only problem with this is that once the fish bites, the player does not have any indication that it's bitten. You have to instead pay attention to the shadow of the fish. When a fish is hooked, it will stop moving and look like it is turned to face upwards. At this point you can reel in to catch the fish. And finally, let's look at the lures. It's always going to be better to use something on the lure because of the bear hook having the lowest interest multiplier. Even though rot and the bear hook have the same charm, just having that multiplier not be quartered by the bear hook helps out a lot. If we want to see which lures are the best lures, these are my suggestions. The best early game lure is the bent spork. It can catch everything except for the bloomfin, the fallounder, the spittlefish, and the popperfish. For these fish, you can just change out for consumable baits like berries and seeds. An important one to catch early on is the fallounder, because you can trade this one for the stupefying lure. And once you got this, you basically can catch every single fish. And of course, when you get the chance, get any rainy or snowy lures just in case of weather. Since those also catch all fish, but they don't have the negative values during bad weather. So just these five lures will keep you in check for all your fishing needs. There is one final thing also that people forget about fishing though, and that is seaweeds exist. Seaweeds are mostly a mob people forget. They're actually docile to the player, so long as you don't crash into them or harvest their barnacles while they're awake. One of the seaweed specialties is attracting fish. Commonly people will know that spittlefish only spawn near seaweeds, but if there are no spittlefish, seaweeds instead will attract any fish that are part of the biome they are in. So if you happen to kill and move seaweeds into an area they are not in, they can spawn fish shoals, meaning you can get lots and lots of fish without wasting many supplies. You can choose to fish these up slowly, or just place a bunch of traps near the seaweeds, and reap the rewards. These are some special things about fishing that no one talks about, I hope you enjoyed. Check out EXO's video for more basic information. Until next time, this has been Terra, and take care.